All right, so now let's take a look at uh, using Power BI with our MS SQL Server here. So in the bottom left corner, you saw that I downloaded that file earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. If you don't have it, just make your way over to Power BI and download it again. And all it's gonna do is establish a connection to the data source. Now, we didn't really need to download this file to do it. It's not that hard to establish our own connection, uh, but it does save us one little step here, okay? So it's gonna load here, just give it a moment. And it's gonna pop this up. If you don't see this, what you can do, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this just to show you how to make a manual connection. So I'm gonna go over to server name, copy that, go back, and uh, if we go into, now you have this button here, but we'll just go get data more, just so you have a more predictable way of loading data in. And uh, we'll go to database here, or we can go to Azure. And so we have Azure SQL database, um, which I think that's what we're using. And so we'll go ahead and hit connect. And so we'll put the server name in there. And the server name was my Azure SQL. We'll hit okay. We'll give it a moment to connect and we'll get back to the same screen. So here we can import the data that we want. We'll say product, product category, um, uh, customer, right? Customer address, address. The more we bring in, the more it's gonna be. So you know what, I'm just gonna narrow it down to just product, product category, and customer. You can transform the data, which is really nice. Um, I'm not gonna get into that because that's a whole other thing, but we'll go ahead and hit load. And what this is gonna do is it's going to start to import this data. And we'll give it a moment. So it's gonna load the data in, and then it's also gonna detect relationships and do our data modeling. So the data is now in. If we go to here, we'll be able to see these tables and explore that data in its raw format. If we go over to this tab here, we can see that it's detected a relationship. The more tables, the more relationships it will auto detect. So we didn't wanna make that too hard. I wanna go back over here to our report, and uh, I just wanna show you how you can visualize some information. So one of the easiest ones to do off the bat is card. So I'm looking for card. So this one, nope, slicer card, okay? And so I'm, I'm just dragging this one out. Just, there we go, or I just clicked it, whatever you have to do to get there. And this is great if you have a single field. So I'm gonna go drop this down and I'm gonna find product by list price. So I'm gonna drag that onto the field here. Notice it went into there. It only takes one input for the fields and there's my price. If I want to change the look of it, I can go down here and there's all sorts of things we can change here, um, like shadow. Um, you know, other things that you can do for fun, but you know, there's a little bit of styling there. And um, let's say I wanted to see that as a table. So what I could do is just change that to table and now it's a table uh, table display. But this information is not very useful. So what I wanna do is drop this down and then uh, drag out the name of the product category. Remember that these have a relationship, it's established here. So it's gonna know how to slice that information to make it useful. And so now we have a breakdown of price and name based on category, right? And uh, I mean, that's category, which there's a, I don't know how to rename that very well. Yeah, for this visual here, we'll say, uh, you know, product, or so this would be category. And for here, we'll just say, we'll just rename that to make it a bit easier. We'll just say price. There we go. Now let's say we want that as a graph. So we just change that over to a graph so we can kind of see the difference in prices all sorts of things. We just click around here to have some fun. Okay, bar chart's gonna be the most useful one, I believe. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything else that's really fun. You hear we have another breakdown, kind of see like uh, the, the cost there of all the stuff that they're selling. Okay, the thing that has the highest price is the bikes, right? Because so the volume of sales is just the cost of each item, right, that they're selling. Uh, you know, so that's how you'd use Power BI desktop with, um, uh, with your SQL server. So yeah, there we go. So another thing that we can do since we have Power BI and we connected it to our MySQL server or our SQL server, no problem, is we probably should try to publish it to um, the Power BI service so that we can see how to make dashboards. So what I'm gonna do is go up the top here and type in app.powerbi.com. If this is the first time you've ever gone here, it's gonna ask you to make an account. Even, even if you have a Microsoft account, it's just another way of uh, authorizing that there. And so here you can see, uh, we can explore all sorts of data sets if we click into here. These are just dashboards, right? And we'll go in here and we can see all this kind of information, which is uh, really nice. And we can go here and just select some information. You can see it's very interactive, which is really nice. Um, and you know, we can go ahead and create our own uh, kind of things here if we were to publish a data set or, or do whatever. But uh, you know, what I wanna do 
is uh, to connect to more data sources, download Power BI Desktop. We already have that installed. So what I want to do is just publish and get something into here. So I'm going to reopen up our file we had there earlier um, and establish a connection to our MSSQL uh, server. We'll make a little port and we'll publish it and see how we can access it through the uh, Power BI service here, okay? So we'll give it a moment. And uh, all I want is product and product category once it decides to load here. So we want product and product category. And I will say load. And we'll give it a moment. And now that is loaded, what we'll do is again, make ourselves a visual. So I will drag out um, a card like we did last time. And we'll go down to product here. I will try price. Uh, it's better, probably better if it's a table. It's a little bit more useful, I think. And we'll go here to product category and drag out the name. Again, we'll rename these. We'll just say rename price. Rename uh, category. And what we'll do, there's a but publish button. We'll go ahead and hit our publish button. So do you want to save changes? Yes. Uh, and we'll just save this, whatever we want to call it. We'll just say my Power BI report. Okay. And uh, so we will just have to put our email in here. Okay. Oops. It's thinking. We'll give it a second. There we go. So it's asking me to log into my account. And we'll say my workspace sounds great to me. And we'll give it a moment to publish that report. Great, that report has now been published. We'll make our way back to Power BI. And so it should be under our workspaces, right? All right, so what we'll do is make our way over to our workspace on the left-hand side, and you'll have to actually click on here, it's not very clear. And we have a data center report. If we click into a report, we have this error about missing credentials. So what we'll do is make our way over to our data set, and we'll just go to uh, settings here. And we might need to provide some credentials here again. So we'll just edit the credentials. And we'll just say Azure user, capital T, testing, one, two, three. Uh, privacy level settings is private. We'll sign in. And you know what? The pro it, I wonder if it'll give us access to user updates, etc. Because it's from a, a uh, <laughs> it, you know, like remember how we had that firewall rule? So it could be the firewall rules that is preventing it. And so if I click into my report, yeah, it's still a problem. So what I'll do is go over to my Azure server, set the firewall rules here, allow Azure services to access this resource, yes. Um, so it's denying the rules. So we'll have to figure that out there. Okay, so uh, it looks like actually us going to the data set and updating the credentials did work. That message was just a bit of a false flag there. I mean, like it did need to reestablish connection, but uh, uh, you know, I thought I thought maybe I had to go digging around in our uh, firewall settings, but it, since we have this turned on, you know, Power BI should be able to access it and it can. So we have, uh, we're looking at a report right now within um, Power BI, but let's say we want to make a dashboard. Well, how would you do that? Well, you go ahead and you just go and hit the pin. We'll say my dashboard. We'll go ahead and pin, pin that. And uh, I mean, if we wanted to create a mobile layout, we could do that. Okay, so there it is for our mobile layout and we can go back to our web layout, right? And from there, you know, now that we have our dashboard, we can go ahead and just, you know, share that with our team or put it in chat, you know, whatever it is. But this is where the point where you would then hit the Power BI Pro where you have to upgrade. But uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. So yeah, there you go.